Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Ninjak coverage of the Northern Arena Beat Invitational presented by Bell. The main qualifier playoffs here. We have got some Sand King. Today. First up, it's gonna be Jeremiah. Duop in a best of three. I'm not alone here. I am being joined by Cap. How you doing, man? Cap? Had the original oh. roster, but who knows? Maybe uh, so Sovereigns are pretty good players, so maybe he'll actually fill in better for Mason. All right. Again, just starting out some sound stuff. Sorry, I know Zaire was poking around with the settings earlier, and I am trying to get things back to normal. Why is Zoda ah, so blame, loud? Blaming it on the other caster in the studio. I know how that is. I always blamed any technical issues on Toby. If we ever had issues in the studio, <laughs> I would always say, ah, Toby was in here last night. He, he probably messed something up, guys. Yeah. No, I, I know that whole song and dance. <laughs> No, no, I was I was talking to the mic, and I'm like, wow, this seems really soft on the overall mixer board, and Zyuri had it at like 2%, so uh, either way, moving forward here into the draft, hopefully audio issues are behind us. We've got, not surprisingly, an Oracle pick up first, but the bigger pick up here, Vidi gets his Earth Spirit first pick on Fox. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, I think Duop are either very brave or very suicidal. Not sure which. Uh, Vidi is obviously an excellent Earth Spirit. Um, we saw that earlier in their match against Infamous. Um, I had a short talk with um, BD today in, in a, a pub, and um, he said that one of the things that, um, like, they're obviously their first day as a team, um, they didn't go very well, right? So I kind of expected just because I didn't get to see the replay because there was no replays, um, and I didn't go back and find the VODs, that I expected that Team Fox just wasn't going to be that good of a team. Um, after the results of the first day, but um, he said they were, they were just nervous. That was kind of like their first time coming out as a team. Um, so I think, you know, he just said, you know, kind of nerves got to us. Um, and that's why they were able to perform um, so much better on that second day, right? Like they took a, that game off of Infamous. That was, you know, that was rather uh, impressive. Um, even if it did, you know, end up going a full to, um, infamous the other way it, it was still impressive that they took a game off of what is probably either the top team or top two um when it comes to my rankings at least of the teams in this this tournament yeah i mean this is going to be a pretty interesting match again fox was uh, a little bit underestimated when they first came in you talked about them being nervous didn't perform so great do up however a lot of people had really really high hopes but uh, in their last game they just really seem to kind of fall apart uh, and they are changed out one member what's the deal with that yeah so uh both you and i did get the info on this that pretty much mason uh rage quit the team after uh losing to wild witch doctors uh the way they did um the the first game i would say big draft win by wild witch doctor so the Whoa, losing to that probably wasn't that big of a shame um but that second game definitely should have gone the way of two up like i uh, literally um L literally uh, eagle would message me and he said that he was alt tabbing towards the end of that game because oh you no know, like he, he was just in his head planning out the next game you know because that's what a good captain does oftentimes is when you see the game is going against you you try and start like planning out what you're going to do with game three you're the captain you're the moral leader you're also the, the strategic you know element so you have to think about like the next step in that best of three so that's what he was doing you know they were so far gone they, that he expected that they wouldn't be able to win that um, and so obviously after the total, uh, total failure of Duop being to be able to close out that game too against Wild Witch Doctors led to some, uh, what I can imagine, some very uh, emotional, uh, um, a lot of emotions came out, I think, with that team. Yeah. And they dropped Mason or Mason Rage Quit. And now they have Sovereign, um, who's pretty good. He's a, I think he's like a 7 5k player. Uh, pub player, pretty good. Um, every single time that I've matched up against him, he seemed to be um, really on his game. So I look forward to what he see what he brings here to uh, do up. Yep, definitely an interesting change out according to uh, the Holy Bible NA Dota. Mason left just because there was, uh, in his opinion, a lack of seriousness, a lack of effort. But we're going to see as this is an elimination best of three. So loser of this best of three will be heading out, not going to get their shot traveling to Montreal to face up in the main event of the Northern Arena uh, uh, Beat Invitational. So uh, definitely a lot on the line here. Both teams going to be put to the test. And now our picks have gotten... A little bit more interesting. I'm really liking what Fox is putting out. Um, let's see. The 
The Warlock is um, a hero that was pretty interesting. We saw, um, who was it, Ehom? Um, Ehom ran it quite a bit. Um, and they were pretty successful with it. It was it was pretty hard to run um, up against the Warlock in team fights, and he gives you this element of high ground potential um, that most other supports are not able to give you. Um, I'm going to presume this is going to be a support Warlock, but it could be a mid Warlock as well. Um, that is an option available to them. Um, and then we could have a different support, or we could have both Earth Spirit and Sand King be supports, but I think most likely Warlock, Earth Spirit are our support duo here, and Sand King will be, um, will be off lane. All right, so uh, last pick here for Duop. It looks like they've got themselves a Juggernaut. Uh, could be mid, could be that safe lane core. And they're going to be grabbing up Anti-Mage, someone you've got some, some experience with here, Cap. How's that going <laughs> to go along with their playstyle? Um... Animage is um, it's really effective versus Morphling. Morphling's a hero that is very reliant on his mana. Um, and then you also have this innate magic resistance from Spell Shield that renders you rather effective against Morphling's um, burst magic damage that it does with the shotgun build. And um, and then on top of that, he has things like Manta to be able to get rid of the like the ethereal parts so the nuke doesn't actually yeah. do as much damage. There's a lot of advantages that Animage has is, in this matchup. So I like this pickup. It just means that Juggernaut's going to be mid. Not terribly surprising. We've seen plenty of mid Juggernauts um, throughout the um, throughout the whole TI meta, um, which is then going to be met with a Marana by Team Fox. So Team Fox definitely running uh, a rather, I would say, aggressive four-man lineup um, where they do have some decent oh. team fight. And, uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's just his name. That's just his name in game. I, I'm, I'm dead serious. When I played with him earlier, he had the, the same name. So I don't think there's, I don't think that's any attempt to, to flame Vinny. Uh, <laughs> that, that just, that is just what he chose his name to be in pubs for whatever reason. All right. Well, we got our first shout out to Grand Grant. So yeah, shout out here too. If you want some, uh, not necessarily professional casting coverage, but if you want some insight into the teams nonetheless, he's also covering these matches, so that's more your style. Go ahead, check it out. But for now, I'm Android, that's Capitalist, and we are about to get underway in game number one of this elimination series, so going to be very interesting. How, how do you predict the first couple of minutes of the game going? The laning phase, what are the matchups going to be like? Um, well, one of the big advantages of Duomp with the, they allowed the Earth Spirit to go through to Team Fox, but they picked up a mid, um, that does really well against it, right? The, um, the, the mid, um, Earth Spirit, like, it's so hard for the, the Earth Spirit to actually gank up that mid lane because the Juggernaut has this innate magic immunity, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I think I'm on, like, player perspective, for whatever reason, of Brink, so I'm gonna disconnect and reconnect. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. that's why my thoughts weren't real clear. I was like watching someone else's mouse move around. I was like, "What's going that?" On? Is actually really weird. Maybe, is it me? Is it my mouse? No, I I don't think so. I think I think it was actually Brink. <laughs> that doesn't seem like something that should it be should able to happen. happen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, it's still there. Are you following Brink right now? I'm looking at whatever I want to look like right now. I'm I'm looking okay, at so Sand it, King. Uh, I'm hopping around I, now, looking at Ogre. I literally can't <laughs> do anything here. Like. What? Did you touch the camera button in the lobby? Because uh, that thing is cursed. I I know I didn't. I definitely I knew not to touch that. That's. <laughs> uh, I may not be a very good co-caster for this game, Annie. If all I can do is follow one person's perspective. Well, but, what, uh, what you could also do is just go watch the stream and then tell me what happened two minutes ago. Just break that uh, down. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, I'll get both up. It'll be the best best of both worlds. You're Player also going to have if, if some really intense idea, insight on Brink going on right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you, if you want to know exactly what Brink is doing with his mouse movements and what he thought he was going to be doing in a team fight and what actually happened, I got that off lock, but everyone else is not. <laughs> okay, thank God. I restarted Dota. I'm back. We're good now. Whew, all right. Hopefully, no more quirky issues. That is probably the weirdest bug I've had in a while. Um, yeah. But either way, runes are going to be a 1-1 one -one split. No action just yet. Uh, anticipating, like you said, mid's going to be pretty difficult to gank up uh, because this is going to be that mid Juggernaut Snake King. Holding on to his levels, not going to grab up the Blade Fury just yet, but probably going to get that soon enough now. There is going to be that Ogre waiting in the wings. Has that Ignite ready to spray out onto Brink, but should easily be able to just walk back to safety. This is um, an interesting idea. They're actually moving their trilane up to top, um, and Doo-Wop have their Animage and Oracle 
at bottom lane. Um, I'm not sure if they hope to be able to put the Sand King 1v1 against the oh, Nyx Assassin. Oh, top lane. Sovereign could be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get body blocked in. Vidi doing his best to keep him on lock. They've also got uh, the Warlock heal going in, and that's just not doing a whole lot of good for Sovereign. First blood goes the way of the Warlock, courtesy of a nicely played Shadow Ward. Yeah, this is, um, I think this will match up pretty well for Fox. Um, their tri lane isn't going to feel any pressure. Um, they really shouldn't ever feel pressure and i think sand king can do quite well against oracle and image um, the main thing he just has to do is use good burrow strikes in order to get out of the snare of fortune's end when the time is right but other than that like any dual lane scenario sand king is going to be happy with because he's so good at putting pressure on the supports with caustic finale because every hit is an extra like if you get just one hit on the support it's an extra 45 damage because the caustic finale explode timer damage um, so it's just like, it allows for really easy harass. Speaking of easy harass, up top there was another roll in on Sovereign. This time, not going to be fruitful. They don't have that damage over time from the Warlock, but still Morphling getting a lot out of this top lane. Our big farmer though, is going to be Juggernaut in the mid, just really outdoing Marana. Snake King playing all up in the wave. Marana only three last hits at the moment. Yeah, not terribly surprising. The um, Marana was, like, when she was in a place where she was never picked up, a large part of the reason was pros felt that her starting damage was so poor that it was hard to run her as a core. Um, nowadays, it's a little bit better with um, her starting damage. I think got buffed a few patches ago, but also with the build that you go for, Wraith Band, Fairy Fire, and then you're given some tangos, uh, it helps make up for that. But the Juggernaut will still obviously have a big last hit advantage, especially since Snake King has a Quilling Blade um, as well. So it's always going to be a CS advantage to the Juggernaut. But thankfully, it also means that Marana won't ever, or shouldn't at least, ever die to the Juggernaut since she has an escape mechanism. Yeah, I mean, that leap is going to be super useful. Now we're going to see Solitary Judge just get picked on here. He was up really far. He did know there were two dire supports in the jungle, so just a little bit out of position, too close to the wave. Uh, and unfortunately, Warlock can only bail you out of so much. Free kill going the way of Duop. Yeah, nice plays by Duop here. They use the Ogre to really bully the Sand King out as much as possible. Uh, even with Caustic Finale, Ogre wins the Harass War. And then they also block the pull, which Warlock looked to stack and hoped to be able to bring the lane back in Sand King's favor. Because he can pretty easily last hit under tower um, without a problem. But they took that out away. So now there's no opportunity for a stack pull. There's only a single pull, which, you know, is ineffective. It actually just pushes out the lane. Uh, further so that lane is rapidly becoming a dead one at bottom and sand king he's gonna have to find something else to do and apparently his answer is go up to top lane uh where i'm guessing they're gonna start rotating the morphling down to bottom but this this feels like a, a bad a bad way to run things at least for now um, I, I don't see the morphling really being able to do a whole lot against that bottom lane just yet when he has Replicate, it'll be a lot better because then he can Replicate the Animage and use that Illusion to harass the AM and burn through some of that mana. Um, but when it's just the AM versus Morph in that scenario, it's like the, the Animage just gets these all these free right clicks in. Snake King, he's only level 5. You could tell he so desperately wanted to just turn an Omni Slash VD on the Earth Spirit, but uh, instead just sitting back. He does have an Arcane Rune, but can't really make a whole lot of use out of that. More just... Uh, making sure the Earth Spirit doesn't get it, the Marana doesn't get it. Now down bottom, Anti-Mage is doing really well in terms of farm. Now he's going to be the last hit leader. 29-11 at 4.5 minutes in. I mean, pretty solid. He's been doing a lot of work here. Taking out this medium camp is definitely going to help him keep control of the wave. Is there more pressure that needs to be put on the Anti-Mage? Or do you just have to let it be for now and prioritize farming up your own heroes? Uh, I think Fox, what they needed to do was, it just comes down to the support play. The support play has been better from Duop because they block this this camp, uh, preventing the stacking that we we're talking about. The equal play that Team Fox should have done is blocked out this hard camp. Um, that way it prevents the extra bit of farm that's going to go the way of the enemy agent, speed up his, you know, Vlad's Battle Fury, whatever his build chooses to be. Um, that that should have been the play, but they haven't done it yet, and they're getting two ups, getting a lot of extra farm, and keeping the creep equilibrium really in their favor. Yeah, I mean, anti mage is just completely running free. There is going to be a rotation in from Earth Spirit. I mean, maybe trying to apply a little bit of pressure as they're going to be bringing down the Morphling as well. So they want to at least take out this lane, at least buy some farm for Morphling, if not force out the anti mage completely. Meanwhile, up top, you've got your uh, Nyx Assassin doing a lot of good work. He's getting a decent amount of last hits, uh, and he's going to be almost level 6 as well. 
So lots of good experience going the way of Duop right now. And it seems like Fox uh, feeling a little bit scattered in the laning phase, like you mentioned. It's not the cleanest way to execute these lanes, but they don't really have much of a choice. Yeah, I thought it would have been okay. Uh, it looked okay for like the first minute or two, but then once they brought the Ogre down to bottom lane, you could see how well they were able to zone out the Sand King. And things rapidly going in their favor. Looks like they're going to try and snipe the rune from Snaking, but he does get off the spin and should be fine from here. Or maybe not. Oh yeah, he's rolling around. He's going for the Omni Slash and the bounces are in his favor. He's able to take out the Earth Spirit, going to be healed up by the Oracle. Does he want to re-engage on this? He doesn't have a Blade Fury. He's just running at you. He's mean. He's quick. He's got the Bloodlust and way too hasted up. Does have the stun available, so the Fire Blast will connect. This could be a very unfortunate Marana. She's got the arrow, but doesn't have that leap off cooldown, so they're able to get the kill underneath the tower. Vidi goes in. He goes for that deep boulder kick, but Snake King, he's still after him. He's got that spin if he needs it, but I think this is going to be the disengage, although Francis, player number three, joins in. Can they actually go under tower here, at least apply some lane pressure? Yeah, if Morphling, if the Juggernaut had been a little bit closer, maybe um, maybe NRS could have jumped to the Replicate and gone for a waveform kill onto the Juggernaut, but unfortunately, couldn't quite close the distance there, and Duop getting a pretty big lead here. The Sovereign was able to pick up level 6 on the Nyx Assassin, so they can now put the Animage back up to that lane. Looks like they're gonna get way too sexy in the mid lane, but it's kind of a... It's a kill, but it doesn't mean a whole lot. It's a level 3 Ogre Machai. What's much bigger is Sovereign being able to build up momentum. Because yes, it's an equally poor support kill, like it doesn't mean that much. Um, but the difference is that Nyx Assassin is a hero that depends on momentum quite a bit. So him being able to get successful hero bounty kills uh, means a lot for his progression into the mid game. Because we've seen late game Axe how much that does. Absolutely. Now mid lane, there is going to be a reinitiation. Way too hops back in. They're looking to go on to Vidi here. Ambitious target. He gets a double man silence and Brink. He doesn't have that arrow just yet. Vidi, will he be able to live through this? There's not going to be that damage over time from the Ogre. So looks like, yeah, he just hobbles back to his base and Brink continues to get a decent amount of farm. Marana now with the Aquila and Brown Boots should be looking towards that point booster. Seems like Snaking. I thought for a second he was going to wrap around, but he doesn't have Omni Slash yet. So just going for that top rune uh, while bottom is denied by Way Too. So doing a good job controlling Brink and making sure he doesn't get some sort of power rune that allows him to um, have an impact on the side lanes. Uh, meanwhile, Sovereign, like he's got two levels of the Spike Carapace. He's got the Vendetta fall back on. He could very easily pick up a Midas if he gets another successful Vendetta gank. Um, and then this Nyx Assassin is just going to start getting out of control. He's going to get the high amount of levels. He'll get that guaranteed farm that Midas gives you. And you could see Blink Dagger, Ags, you know, that those are really big pickups to have by like 20 and then 30 minutes respectively. Yeah, things are going pretty all right for him. He's getting enough farm. He's getting enough space. Now, let's talk about Morphling. Has rotated da rotated down to the bottom, uh, like you talked about earlier, just to get a bit of freedom, a bit less pressure, and salvage what's left of this lane. Is Morphling getting enough now? Is he on par with where he needs to be, or is it still going to be a tough mid game? Uh, considering he's matched up against Juggernaut as well as Animage, I would say no. He's not getting enough. Um, but there's not much you can do about that. It looks like the laning setup was just in favor of Duwa. Um, what it'll mean a lot more is Fox's other three heroes, whether they can be aggressive and maybe shut down the Animage or get a pickoff here or two. Uh, on the Juggernaut, they need to be able to not just create space for the Morphling, but also be able to keep the enemy cores down uh, because the enemy cores are so good versus Morphling. We talked about how good Animage is in the draft, and yesterday we talked about how Juggernaut is not that bad either with his Manta Diffusal build. Oh, it looks like we could have an initiation coming in. Snaking with that Omni Slash is booting up to this top lane. We've got Anti Mage now showing himself, hopping in, trying to clear some waves. Vidi! just gets unloaded upon their Oracle, ensuring that the kill takes place. So that's going to be a full commit from Snake King. And we're just going to go take out the farm from this hard camp and sit back, relax, allow this lane to push with Anti-Mage leading the charge. At this point in time, it looks like the rotations of Fox are being read pretty well. Um, the fact that Snake King was already on his way up to that top lane kind of shows that they have that read. And now Solitary Judge, he's going to have his stack be found by oh. Snake King, and a lot of it's going to be taken away. Oh, no, and 
Judge himself getting very, very low. Snake King pops into the healing ward, knowing he doesn't really want to fight under the sandstorm, but cleaning up these creeps, so delicious here. Now Judge, gonna wander away, wants to go in for the last hit, but can't even find it on that Dark Troll Summoner, so unfortunately, Sand King gets a lot of money denied here. There is a tower picked off by the Anti-Mage. It seems like everything right now starting to roll in Duop's favor. Now down bottom, there might be some sort of consolation prize. You've got a Vendetta Nyx up amongst three heroes, and... Well, can they actually get vision of it? Morphling, he's got nothing. Earth Spirit, no sentries on him. The vision game's a little bit lacking from Fox, but now you've got a Vendetta Nyx roaming around. Yeah, that was uh, really just poor planning in some ways. Like, maybe I think they straight up just couldn't afford the dust, but they tried to go for a gank on Sovereign, missed the abilities, and Sovereign was able to Vendetta away. And now he's going to get an initiation on Vidi, leading with oh. Snake King following up. Yeah, Snake King, unfortunately, no Omni for him, but should be able to clean up these kills. Just a couple of right clicks and a Blade Fury. Morphling goes forward, wants to escape with his own life, but unfortunately, Earth Spirit continues to get picked off. This is Vidi's signature hero, but now 0-3, not really making a whole lot of impact with these rotations. Uh, it's feeling really tough for Fox. What's their way back in this game? Uh, well, Brink's doing the right thing, with Snake King always rotating between top and bottom. Um, Brink is doing, I think, the correct move in pressuring the mid lane and seeing if he could take this tier 1 tower. Because at this point, at least my read of the game is that Fox can't actually contest. Um, the Brink can't just follow Snake King around and really fight, uh, as well as Snake King's Juggernaut can. At least not yet, anyway. Um, so I think it's better for them just to spend the time farming and try and hit hard at like 15-20 minutes, where the Animage won't be online and the Juggernaut will probably want to take some time farming then as well. I think that's going to be Team Fox's best chance to get back in this game. Um, but if they don't hit hard or hard enough, the cores are just going to start getting out of control and Morphling's not going to get enough farm to beat them out. Alright, now rotation into the mid, the arrow will not latch on anyone. Meanwhile, Antimage just goes for a YOLO pick off Vidi. Once again, trying to play on his own, trying to just be on the sidelines, soak an XP, but continually gets punished. The big fight's gonna break out mid. Oh, Brink thinks he's got the upper edge here, but little does he know the rest of the crew rotating around from behind, dropping down into the mid lane. You bring in the damage dealers now, and it looks like there's not a whole lot of response from the Radiant. All they're trying to do is get the Warlock home to safety, but not gonna be able to happen. Morphling comes back in, makes a replica of the Anti-Mage, but Anti-Mage just blinks back on in, gonna be blinking home, and it looks like Duop don't really lose anything here. In fact, may even be able to apply some significant pressure to the tower. Yeah, it looks like with the Morphling replicate out, it, it'll be able to force back Duop. Um, just the danger of the Mana Bird and the, the Morphling jumping forward. Uh, but they really need to get some sort of kills, and it looks like they're gonna try for bottom with the Epicenter combination. Can they keep him locked down for long enough though? He's going in for the blink, but will not be able to execute. So finally, Vidi gets his revenge on this pesky anti-mage that's knocked him down twice in a row. One, four, and two. Still not ideal for the Earth Spirit at this point in time. You know, Earth Spirit's real big momentum gain is in that early game for those early rotations, but well, it's at least something here. Now, Dust popped out from the Warlock. They go in, they get that Shadow Word onto Sovereign, leap forward from Mirana, but I really don't know if they're going to be able to continue the chase here. Spike Carapace is a really great way to hit that pause button and, well, just let Brink go back to right clicking. It seems like the. Uh... Yeah, that's Brink. a reinitiation. <laughs> Easy peasy. Not showing enough respect to the rotations of Duop. I feel like that's a consistent problem for Fox right now. Yeah, twice now they've. that Sovereign's gotten away with a vendetta and then he's come back in and forced to fight and you gotta respect that the if you don't have the counter vision that the next assassin could still be there um waiting to initiate on you he's got hand of Midas and another 500 gold already so this next assassin is definitely going to hit his agnum scepter if we go that late into the game um so he's gonna have like a pretty respectable late game impact as an offlaner um, and, and that's going to be tough because that, then that means there's even more mana burn to deal with for this Morphling. Um, you obviously have the two cores that are both going to be doing a lot of right click mana burn um, themselves. But then you're also going to have this Nyx Assassin with his long range being able to uh, take that away. All right. Now Brink, I don't think he knows just what he's up against here. Snake King is ready with the Omni Slash and oh, there's going to be a leap away and Snake King's not going to follow up here. Uh, why not go for the Omni right away? Uh, because the leap will just be able to disjoint. Like, if you jump in and he leaps out, it'll just disjoint the, uh, the Omni Slash. You won't be able to keep up. Um, there's some weird instances with, with Omni Slash. Some things do break it. It's just a, a question of how far and how quickly 
you move um, in distance, and leap is one of those abilities that can disjoint it. So. All right, looks like the Dire, they're going to be moving in towards the mid lane. Who's the most important target to take out right now? Do you have to isolate the Morphling? Is it the Mirana? Um, for... I mean, it's nice always to kill the Morphling, but I think he's too tough of a target um, to kill. Sometimes you shouldn't unload on him because he might just morph strength and then you've blown a lot of nukes and might lose the team fight because of it. Um, much better to, to be able to kill like a squishy or damage dealer like the Mirana. If you can initiate... Uh, first on her, that's like so much of the damage. Um, also, I would love to be able to see if you can find it, Warlock or an Earth Spirit. Those two are obviously very good counter initiators as well. As soon as Warlock gets his level 6, which by the way, it's 16 minutes in and he still does not have that ultimate available. It seems like they didn't really have a very good plan with this Warlock pick. They just picked it up. Um, whereas we saw with Ehome, they always had a game plan when it came to picking Warlock. Now Vidi in the mid lane, he's pushed up, he's all alone, and Oracle starts the party. Nick shows off that Vendetta, and it's an easy kill. Like you mentioned, go in for those very easy pickoffs, and that just leaves a couple less bodies for the next team fight. So Fox, I mean, they're avoiding the issue right now. They're just going up top, trying to get something done, trying to get a little bit of tower push, but it's going to cost them their mid tier one, perhaps even some tick damage on their mid tier two. Anti-Mage is going to be picked out here. Brink looks like he might be trying to just force him back and take out the farm, but Francis is in no real trouble. The rest of his team accomplishing goals on every step of the way. And, I mean, overall net worth tells the real story here. Almost 10,000 advantage for Duop here at the 16-minute mark. That's really not great. Yeah, it feels like the team is on two different pages here, too, for Team Fox. Um, we just saw Solitary Judge smoke up. He had his Blink Dagger. He was ready to go with the initiation on mid. But the rest of the team, uh, the three up top, chose to keep going for that tier one tower um, when it's not a very effective trait. The mid tower is always more valuable than any of the side lane towers. Um, I think they just felt like they couldn't actually fight and get set up in time, despite the fact that they have this big surprise at the blink epicenter ready to go on Solitary Judge. Yeah, I mean, even the Blink Epi, though, there's just so much escapability. Now, Sovereign is going to scout out exactly what's going on with this Moonlight Shadow into the bottom tier, too. So Duop have accurate time to deal with that, to time it out. Looks like they're just going to wrap around. They could pop their heads in the Roche Pit, but for now, looks like they're just going to group up all together. I mean, they're not feeling a whole lot of pressure. You look at the damage dealers that are going to be coming online for Duop soon, and I think they should be able to deal with the Morphling, no matter how hard NRS free farms. Uh, Anti-Mage already yeah. has his Battle Fury Yasha, Juggernaut doing exceptionally well in terms of net worth, keeping pace with the Anti-Mage now, even at 20 minutes in. This is going really well. Fox, they're putting a lot of eggs in the Morphling basket right now, because Marana, she's barely halfway to Ags. Uh, Morphling still working on the Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, you're not going to see any damage come out of this Morphling until probably 35 minutes. And there's going to be this really big spike for Duop, probably around 25 to 30 minutes, where they have Manta on Animage and Diffusal on the Jug. That, that is their time to just straight up end the game, or at least take one lane of Rax and uh, probably two Groshans. Um, the, the mid game is all theirs. And Fox, they have to like try desperately to push this mega late game to come back. Oh, Brink, unfortunately, going to be picked off here. Morphling Replicate, nowhere in sight. They are going to drop the Chaotic Offering, but Brink still gets picked off. They do get Snaking in return, though. Waveform Forward Sovereign is going to be in some trouble there, but... Oh, man. Jason doing his hardest to keep him alive. Jason's able to TP out. Similar story with the Nyx. Unfortunately, Nyx does pop in the base. The Oracle ult was not enough to keep him alive. So, Duop, they lose two. They do trade for the Mirana and some serious damage on the tier two. How worth of a fight was that? Uh, I mean, I think you're so far behind as Team Fox right now that you are very happy with that engagement. Honestly, any sort of um, numbers trades that's in your favor is probably going to be um, something that you're happy with. Uh, I mean, just look at the score, right? That says the whole entire story. 5-12, to 12, the fact that they just made a 1-for-2 trade-off, um, I think is absolutely worth it. Um, you include the fact, like, there's comeback factors, you know, there's obviously a lot more net worth on Duop, uh, as well as experience. It means those kills were worth even more. Um, than they normally would be. So, Brink, he, you know, he he died there, but at the same time, his buildup for Aghanim Scepter means that he shouldn't ever have too much unreliable gold. So his deaths um, don't mean as much as they do on many other mid heroes. Any other any hero that has to go for like a 2k or 3k item, um, it means you're holding onto a lot of unreliable gold. But Aghanim Scepter, it's like thousand gold a piece, right? So it means at most you're probably losing 500 unreliable gold. More likely, 
you're losing probably 200 or 300 because you buy out before you die. Yeah, Brink getting very, very close to the Ags. Only needs a couple hundred more gold now. Unfortunately, rest in pieces, Warlock. That was brutal. They just got in, executed, and went right back out. Looks like they are posturing up. They've still got their big spells here. Sovereign sitting back. Has that mana burn at the ready? Can initiate with the Impale now. And Juggernaut, he's sitting back with that Omni Slash. Going to be level 2. Hasn't hit that 16 just yet, but... I mean, he is well on his way to just farming out of control. There's going to be pings out onto Solitary Judge. Looks like he's getting some ideas about initiating onto the Anti-Mage, but does he know just what's coming at him? Impale Latches, they are able to get the Mana Burn, and they also have the Mana Void at the ready, but unfortunately, Detection will be their bane. They're not able to get the lockdown onto Judge. I think Francis maybe could have gone for popping the Manta there and um, burning enough mana for the Mana Void to go off in that short little stun uh, grace period, but... I guess there's no reason to really force it too badly. Um, Francis just goes right back to farming at that top lane. Our Juggernaut is about to finish up the Diffusal Blade. Once you have that item, this is where you go Roshan. Uh, you get the Aegis, you take the rest of these Tier 2s, oh. and then 2 can make the choice. Uh, if they want to go high ground with that first Aegis or just control the game from there. Now, Sovereign oh. was revealed here. He walked underneath the Sentry Ward trying to initiate, but is able to dodge out there. Just blinks himself back up to the high ground. There's a big rotation on him, though. Even Morphling's Replicate joins in. The Dust, can they actually keep it on long enough? He's going to have the Vendetta up in 30 more seconds, and it doesn't look like Fox are willing to invest the resources that it takes to really commit and lock down the Nyx. So for now, Nyx is 4-2-4. Four, and four. I mean, overall kill scores on Duop are pretty great. Yeah, Duop are just kind of running around, doing what they want. Uh, even Sovereign there not being punished by um, him being sitting so far forward and giving information. And the fact that he got spotted out by a counter ward is pretty big, right? That would have been a really nice pickup for Fox, and they could have gone and maybe taken some map control, you know, four versus five in a scenario like that. But it's just not going to happen. And Nyx's dance, and the fact that he got that 20-minute blink dagger, like we kind of predicted with the Midas, um, is huge because if you look at Duop, the one thing that's missing for them is initiation. But now with the oh. Nyx Assassin blink, they've got it in spades. Yeah, they went they went for that smoke up, that group play, but they were just a little bit late. And now you can see they're just sitting around like, oh crap, do we keep pushing forward? Do we try to pick a fight? Do we run in shame? What happens? Sovereign is going to keep some good eyes on the rest of the team. And it looks like Duop, they're finna push just straight up in this. We'll see where the fight starts out. There is going to be that... Uh, Burrow strike channeled up, but Jason gets clipped by the arrow. Now Vidi gonna get blown up here. Sovereign with no mercy. Brink, he's gonna get rotated on as well. This Golem making easy work uh, of pretty much nothing. He's just slapping away, but not getting a whole lot accomplished. And the GG comes out at 23 minutes after Duop just have a really, really successful run here. Yeah, this... This game, I think, was over for a very, very long time. Um, the laning phase wins kind of poor. But it was also the fact that their that Fox, the way they they kind of set up the strategy was they were going to run this sort of like four man team fight esque lineup um, where it can get super aggressive in 15 minutes and kind of set the tempo for the game. And that would free up space for the Morphling to try and carry around 30, 35 minutes um, and go high ground from there. But they couldn't establish any dominance at the 15 minute mark. Quite the opposite, Duop was the one controlling everything because they just transitioned so much better um, with the Juggernaut. And then from there, it's like, okay, we have the Morphling late game, but you're heavily countered by an AM uh, and a Juggernaut. So it just leaves you really no room uh, to work around. You know, I said maybe they can go super late game, but that's like super late game with a lot of mistakes made by yeah. Duop. Um, so it's just not feasible. Fox, call it early. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's looking like Duop, they got their magic back. They got that sparkle. They brought Sovereign in, and so far it's been really successful. But best of three series can always just take a nosedive or spiral up in unexpected ways. So everyone sit tight. Game number two coming at you in just a couple of minutes.